time. All mm-hmm. right. All right, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Fire Squad Wednesday. I am your co-host and trusty gosh darn God. Uh, LK, the God, the deity, the mogul. I'm here with some good friends of mine. But first, before we get to the cast, I want everybody to go subscribe on YouTube, leave a like, a comment. Also, on Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review and comment and rate us. Yeah. Now, to the co-host. We have C. Jizzle, live from Liberty Sizzle, a.k.a. Puff Go Poppy. What you puffing on a day, kid? Funny, man. I'm still on this live browser. I'm trying to get rid of this stash so I can come home. I'll, I'll recoup, get some some of that DC DC loud loudness, but... Right now, I got some mm-hmm. uh, Mac One live batter rosin from uh, Sunnyside. Some of the best tasting shit that I, I've got down here in Florida. If I can grab some before I come back, I'll bring some for for the crew. Okay, she's loving the crew. Also, we have dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? We What's have. Up? Funko Pop Poppy Sith Lord. Also, here's a new nickname for you Playlist Poppy. We he's in the building. Poppy. Wow. Go crazy with that one. Also, you see the art in the background, the beautiful art that is Sif God. What's Sif up? God. Sif God. Yes. yes. Also, I paint. I've paint. been mm-hmm. pulling. Word up. Mm-hmm. Let's get it. Let's get into it. Let's get it. Gang, gang. Also, we have the man with the tattoos on his hand. Be mad. Be mad. Okay. Play outstanding. <laughs> okay. Play outstanding. Bro, shout out to hand tats, though. Shout out to all hand tats. Yeah, 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 sir. Shout out to all hand tats. I'll be there one day. Also, we have the one, the only, Nick at Night, Wesley Snipes, Sniper Lead in the building. Yo, yo, yo. What did you do? All right. Now, to our sponsor. When's the last time you were taken care of? It starts the moment you reserve your event, date, place, or your order. You know what I'm saying? Phenomenon Cocktails specialize in signature cocktails and mocktails with both bulk and bottled full bars and bartending services. That's really neat, though. Get 10% off your next order using code FIRE. That's F I Y A. When confirming with our coordinators, their coordinators, we don't have coordinators right now. They do, though. Discover Phenomenon at phenomenoncocktails.com. Definitely, guys, check that out because, whew, that cider hook. Let them know, bro. Come on. Okay, okay. So here's the thing we were live at the bonfire. What was it last weekend? And, you know, we were recording, podcasting, vibing out to uh, Playlist Poppy, you know, vibing us out. Also, um, you know, so she she said, yeah, I have some cider here with three whiskeys in it. I was like, hmm, three whiskeys. She said three whiskeys. And it was warm, too. It was steam coming off of it. Do you remember steam coming off of it? Yes, yes, KB. And it stopped the podcast. That's how great it was. It was go, go I want to say episode. it was the it was the best drink I've ever had. It, and it was hot too. Like we were, it were it was by the fireplace. It was real vibey. It was warm. You need to try the cider. Gang. Come to the next one, part two, November 20th. Yes. That's next Saturday, y'all. Show up, pull up, listen to us talk shit. Yes. Now listen to us talk more shit. Let's start with the Eternals. Now, if you listen to the last episode, you know that we already had a um, full breakdown of the movie, so you don't we don't want to uh, bother you with that again. So, what we'll do is have any final thoughts and CJ's playing landing sequence on the movie. Um, my final thoughts personally is for anyone that hasn't seen this movie. I'm not saying don't go see it, but you're not missing much if you listen to spoilers because there's really 
nothing to get into. Just like Steve was saying earlier, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> not much to get into. It's kind of dry, but it's still kind of good, but it's still kind of dry. It's worth seeing if you care about Marvel as a whole and what they're doing. Yeah. If you're like a if you're a casual fan and you just like, oh, it's Iron Man, that's cool. But if you're one of those kind of people, you you, you can you can skip this one. Don't go in expecting a good Marvel movie. Go in expecting like you don't know shit about the Eternals. Like you don't know absolute shit. Yeah. Because I still don't. Um, <laughs> let's mm-hmm. have uh let's say most people mad. don't know anything to about be the fair, to be to be know. fair. As a person that has read comics for a long time, mm-hmm. it really doesn't matter. Because, yeah. like, I've was, you know, what's crazy? I've been hearing a lot of talk about how, like, this movie could have been used to introduce the X Men. And I think that would have been, like, wow, cool visually, would have been a huge misstep because, like, the Eternals aren't cool enough to be next to the X-Men or anything about the X-Men in the same film and still stand out. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not going to happen at all. Not going to happen. If you put the X-Men in this movie, they overshadow the Eternals. And the movie should anybody. Be anybody. You could put any... What's, what's like a whack X-Men that's like... That's kind of popular. You could Jubilee. Put, Jubilee. Yeah. yeah. Jubilee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you could have put a you could have put a mention of Jubilee in this movie and people be like, yo, Eternals got Jubilee, bro. You could have put a, a Disney that Mar- been like a it. Marvel nerf to Jubilee. <laughs> and that would have been it. it would have overshot the whole movie. Damn. Hey, think it exactly. Think about it. That would have mm. been the wrong play. I mean, like, if you care about, like, we, we're all fans of, this, of not only the character, like, the Marvel universe as, as movies, but we're all fans of, like, the comics and characters, too. So, of course, we, we want to see it. We got to see it. We kind of have to see it. Mm. But if, like, you're a casual moviegoer, like, you've seen one or two films, you think it's cool that they, like, made a whole thing over 10 years. And mm-hmm. you might can see it. But, like, if you just want to see, like, a cool superhero movie, you can go see something else. I feel like the biggest draw for this movie was the cast. Which was very underutilized. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And a lot of their powers because yeah. All yeah. of them are supposed to be able to fly. I won't, I won't no, I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't even say that. <clears throat> I feel like, and this might be a spoiler, when you find out their actual purpose. The fact mm-hmm. that they all have these unique powers makes no sense. Because if one is by themselves, that's just the end of it. Like washing, exactly. which like they show, which they actually show numerous times. Washing, <laughs> yeah, they washing. actually show that numerous times. They're like only having one specific power is not good for you. <laughs> but then mm-hmm. they like they make it clear, like yeah, like. You're mm-hmm. supposed to be all power. Like that makes no sense. Like, like Ajax the, is only useful to them after one one of them got hurt. Other than that, she, she would just die. And then if she's a, she was <laughs> only useful because she had the, the matrix of leadership. Nigga, what yeah, she was about? the prime eternal <laughs> in the movie. It's a lot of stuff they did to change the lore of the movie. Yeah. Like the they matrix of leadership from Transformers. Which yeah. I think which I think backfires on Marvel because if you paid attention to like the media or like how they went about this movie, mm-hmm. Marvel wanted this movie to be their, Black their segment to the next phase. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so they basically A first picked, family, basically. But if they gave yeah, them all their original yeah. powers, they'd be too strong. Not even that, but like they Marvel made it. Not even that they made the movie as like a clean slate, basically, because the characters aren't super known. The powers mm-hmm. are kind of ambiguous. They made this movie so they can like kind of insert what they wanted into a movie that's <laughs> still canon. But even but the, if they gave them their original powers, they definitely could have done a lot more with this movie. Like, yeah, hey, they could have gave the deviants a way bigger role than what the fuck they already were in. Oh, they were deviants because all of that plays into the actual <laughs> larger Marvel universe. 
I'm beyond. I mean, who didn't have their original powers? Well, the Deviants look like accordion monsters. They look like <laughs> accordion monsters, you know, like strings of uh, spaghetti. That's what I compare them to. They weren't really they they compel- look compelling. They, they they look like venom. They all look like venom. Yeah. Yeah. Spindly monsters that look like spaghetti and uh until they became humanoid, then you got popped immediately by Angelina Jones. Which, nice which I think is probably the the that plot I mean, line should have been lips. used way more. <laughs> That plot line could have went way further. Well, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think the Eternals stay relevant. They never really stay relevant in the comics, and they took out At something all. that is very crucial to their lore that was pretty much taken out of the movie completely, and my hope is that they took it out because it interferes with something that the X-Men are doing right now, which is resurrecting themselves. Like, they had oh, yeah, one of the biggest yeah. parts of the Eternals is, like, they're eternal, and when they die, they can just come back. And it's not like yeah. a big deal. They did not allude to that in the movie. Like niggas was fucking off in Eternals and these niggas doesn't coming back. And there was no mention of like, oh, he'll just be back next week. Because in the way they changed the lore, there's no Olympia. They would usually go back to Olympia. You could resurrect a nigga and it's no big deal. But with- if they do that, then they acknowledge the fact that people like Zeus are alive. They pretty much oh, confirm the Lactus. Like they, if they do that, they pretty much confirm all those type of things, I feel. Well, they are because well, Zeus is going to be in the new in the and well in the new Thor is Zeus is going to be in. in well, the movie. Oh, okay. Let me tell you this: if they had um, the hell is her name? The whoever directed I close out. If they had her direct this movie and they have John Watts to direct the um the new Fantastic Four, and they both supposed to be like the first family. I don't want him to do this, like, because this might that might be another sour taste in our mouth mouths with the last two Fantastic Four movies that we have. If if Fantastic they, Four is bad, I might marvel a letter. <laughs> exactly, like, just give it up, please. Like, we've well, had enough. Like, my whole thing is, I'm hoping they left the resurrection out because they're going to do that with the X Men when they introduce them and do the Krakoa era, like modern mm-hmm. X Men, and not go back to the fucking school that we've seen for like 20 years in the Fox universe, the Westchester shit. Mm-hmm. And they do the more modern version where the mutants mm-hmm. resurrect themselves. And I'm hoping they left that out of the Eternals lore because, as you said, the Eternals are much less cool than the X Men. And if you're going to use that fucking idea, you should save it for the way more popular characters <laughs> instead of like. Icarus and fucking Cersei and shit. Yeah. So, so where would y'all rank this movie against the pack? I mean, yeah, this one. This is like low mid. Low mid? Mid at best. Mid. It's definitely a skip if you don't care. Mm-hmm. Barely had anything to do with the MCU anyway. I mean, I feel like it just set up a bunch of it, shit that no one it, knows. It did, it though, coming. yeah. It, yeah, because it, 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 it seems had, like it set like, up Guardians and it set up whatever the fuck is going on with the Black Knight and Blade and shit, so. Okay, well, yeah. Blade can, I, Blade. can I say this? Can I say this? Can I say this? Uh-huh. I feel like <clears throat> this was supposed to be, like, the movie for fans, but they picked the least popular cast of characters. Cause there's like a lot of there's a lot of nods yeah. to like shit you kind of like have to read comics to know about but it's like if i read comics still like i wouldn't give a fuck about the eternals anyway fuck. i don't know they got, the, they got like, one of the best comics out right now though right now but like in the grand scheme of things this is what like oh it's in the span of eternals is what like three books that's like really mean anything yeah, but those three books slap though. <laughs> yeah, but like in the grand scheme of compared everything, compared to like compared are, to all of the X Men, Fantastic Four, and all the are, other guys, exactly. Are any of the are any of those books in age? Are any of those books in Age of Apocalypse? I mean, are I mean, any of those books a Phoenix Saga? Are any of those books a Franklin Richards anything? I don't want to see nothing again with the Phoenix Saga. <laughs> yeah, no but I say Phoenix Saga. About that. I love X Men, but Phoenix Saga has been a little over revered. But I think uh, Morrison's run, like they, they've had like classic runs of Eternals, but obviously they're they're not as popular. They they don't have as many iconic storylines as the X Men. Like, come on, dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, X-Men. but when, when you put them next to anybody else, it's like, why do you really care? I mean, like, I think that's what's interesting. It's similar, like Guardians. Like, no one asked for a fucking Guardians of the Galaxy movie when we got it. But, yeah, but like, they like, made that. But they made that work, though. But they made I mean, that work. 
You could tell what they made it? that yeah. work for what it was. I have some trivia. Um, it says Chloe Zhao uh, cites The Revenant as an influence on the film's action sequences. Jesus Christ. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> Uh yeah okay so uh CJ's playing land a sequence and then we can uh, move on. I mean, like any Marvel movie, most of it is an advertisement for the next two to three Marvel movies. Like so, at the end, yeah. like there's a plane land. I don't fucking know where the Eternals took these. I mean, where the Celestials took these niggas. I don't know. Well, as a movie, how you know exactly as where a it separate took. movie. You know exactly as where itself. it took it, but do you really care? Took them to the next movie, whatever the fucking sequel they're going to be in next. <laughs> no, 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 no. It took, it took them to the next three or four movies next two years from now. Yeah. But I think yeah. as its own, it, it's solid. I think the movie had some missteps, though, like I said. I think it was it, it was more ambitious. It bit off more than it can true, chew. And I think the, the main Definitely. misstep was, like I said, just making the main character Cersei and making Cersei not that interesting. And like I said, so we had to follow that a little too long with the shit with Icarus. But I like overall, I like what they try to do with it. Like, there's really no traditional villain. It's more of like a philosophical disagreement of like, what should we fucking do? And like, should we let this happen or should we not let this happen? Rather than who do we punch? And I think that's it. <laughs> has All anybody seen has anybody boring. seen the movie Chasing Amy? No. No one has seen Chasing Amy. Mm-mm. I never mind. Familiar. Never mind, never mind. mind. All right, so that's Eternals, everybody. Put the nail in the coffin. So moving on to the bonfire, let's do 10 of the worst video game movies. You guys, are you ready for this? I feel like I feel like I feel like this is a kamikaze mission because like are there any good video? Yeah, I was say, what are the good ones? Tomb Raider one. No, the, the first Mortal Kombat, bro. Come on, man. Yeah, was I go to bed. Or was that just classic. like fondly remembered for the nostalgia? Whole classic. All of Cold that. Classic. All of that. I'm. I'll. I'll, I'll, def- I'll def- Matter of fact, you know what? I'm a real nigga. I'll defend that one and Annihilation. Ooh. Hey, um, I'm hearing rumors of a Super Smash Brothers uh movie coming out. I don't want to see that. I don't. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Donkey Kong movie coming out, played by I somebody. I forgot who it was. Donkey Kong matter. You know what? Fuck it. Donkey Kong played by Don Cheadle. <laughs> no, uh, go ahead. It's actually a white video game movie. Did, 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 Diddy Kong played by Kevin Hart. What's up? Jesus. I mean, if that's that the is... game, Donkey Kong is played by The Rock. Oh Boy, god, yeah. that there would be have wild as shit. There you have it. <laughs> that, I don't have nothing. To, I don't have nothing to say about that. You have a list, KB? <clears throat> I got a list. Um, mm. Yeah, so answering uh, Steve's question earlier, of good ones, yes, it definitely is the original Mortal Kombat. But for your worst, you got um, Chun Li. That Street I, Fighter movie. I was just about to oh say Legend God. of Chun Li. I forgot I was, about I was that was going to start one. with Legend of Chun Li. Yeah, I forgot about that one. I forgot Ooh, that, was yeah. one. that was a Horrible. bad one. That was a bad one. Horrible, horrible, horrible. You got Postal. The um, who was in that movie? I forgot her name. It was horrible. It got a twenty-two out of a hundred on Metacritic. So I mean, <laughs> hey, I seen that forever ago, and it was just Postal. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that one. Terrible what game. Was that about? Who was in that? Was anybody in that? I don't even feel like looking that up for a minute. Are we are we including live action? Or is it only live action? Or are we yeah, it's all just movies? live action. It's okay, just I mean, live action. We might as well throw the other Street Fighter joint in there too, man. Oh, yeah. No, I, I fucked with that one first. I was going to say the first Street Fighter, the joint with M. Bison in it. I fucked oh, with that. Oh, the real M. Bison? That's a I cool classic. That. That's no, a cool yeah. classic. Yeah. No, that's I, I'm sorry. I like that, John. I'm sorry. I got I got to save it. I got to save it. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. He gonna tell me I don't like it. <laughs> How you gonna tell him nothing like that? How you gonna tell that man nothing like that movie, bro? I like it, bro. Now, like uh, it, bro. Super Super Mario Brothers. That's the worst movie. We don't talk in my life. We don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk about that. That's the worst one I've ever that's seen rough. in my life. That's rough. And Alone in the, in the Dark. With, you, I don't remember that. Oh, you see that? The Joe Christian Slater. 
Mm-mm, I didn't see that one. Baby, I, I haven't even played play that game. That's a free. real thing. That's a real thing. That's a real movie, bro. Y'all need to go see that. All right, just the mm. Doom. Yes, Doom, Silent Hill, Blood Rain, Devil Dragon. Yo, Blood Rain movie. Yo, <laughs> yo, wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold on, hold on, pause, hold on. Pause, 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 pause. So, like, wait, wait, wait. Do y'all know about the 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 director of Blood Rain? No. Uh, this nigga name. What the fuck is? <laughs> His name is like you say something, but like he's a wild ass like European nigga, and like he di- he directs all the video game movies basically. Like he did Rain and a couple other jumps, but like oh yeah, I did hear about that. He did um shit, I don't even I, my, I didn't mean to cut you off, but he did do a couple of them joints. Yeah, but like he real him. life like challenges people that hate his movies to like box him in boxing matches. Uh, <laughs> and he be like knocking niggas out, no cap. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> he real loud like, like challenges niggas. Like matter of fact, KB looking at it real fast, but like he challenges he niggas. Like, he did House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Alone yeah. in the Dark Two, Blood Rain, Blood Rain Two, Deliverance, Blood Rain the Third. They did and, three. And then they did the three. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. He paid three. out of pocket for that one. <laughs> like, three in the name of the King movies. The last uh, who last. keeps giving this nigga I mean, money? Postal bro. and Far Cry. <laughs> he definitely paid out of pocket for some Far Cry shit. movie. There's a Far <laughs> Cry movie. That's Why does movie. this nigga get the money to make these movies? Like who is who's, who's allowing this guy getting his money? Oh, hey man, I, I, forty I, I, million dollars. You make sixty. That's a twenty mil flip. You could do that five times. You not, know, even, not, even, that. not even that. Not, not even that. You How can make nigga it? making twenty million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You Some can make a soul. listen, bro. You can make a movie for a million dollars. Yeah, sell some yeah. DVDs overseas or some shit. I yeah. mean, not not illegally. I'm saying like sell DVDs, but like if you just and if, overseas, if you need DVDs. like a baseline movie budget, you can make a movie for five hundred thousand dollars. A I feel million like when, is like the sweet spot. I feel like back mm-hmm. when Badmas had VHS and DVDs, niggas could do anything. The money was even less. It was unstoppable. Like all you needed was a camera, and you could be a producer. Yeah, of an indie movie. Mm-hmm. Yo, okay. this nigga is drinking and that lemonade, nigga. Yep, <laughs> <Three lemonade. laughs> nigga, Is that all the? the uh, uh, that's the most worst, player shit ever, nigga. Worst, worst, worst video game adaptation ever. Mario, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mario, hands down, Mario. No, that was my list, bro. Oh, that was the list. Yes, sir. I didn't want to do all of them because there's there's like forty something movies, not top ten. That, mm-hmm. That's I feel like the ones that are like really really bad, no one really cares about. Yeah, because not a lot of people see them because they don't get advertised. You know, it always gets advertised though. Well, a lot of stuff gets advertised on Facebook, like the uh, the live action One Piece movie that's coming out, the live action uh, Yu Yu Hakusho show. I think it's a show. No, it's a movie coming out, um, and all the other. Uh, so, why do people feel the need to make live action movies? Money, capitalism. Yeah, that's it. Validation. Money. Validation. Ego. Validation. It's all validation. So somebody wants to somebody really wants to be the first to have yeah. like to have like a, a big notable anime name, you know, Anar your Naruto, your one piece you bleach, your fucking whatever, what? and just and just knock it out the park. Let me say this. Y'all call me crazy, but I did say we are close to getting a Dragon Ball Z live action movie. I said that a long time ago. It's going to happen. They're going Ricky, down the list Ricky already. Bobby, Ricky and Bobby, don't going you wish to down the Ricky list and Bobby, already. don't you wish to evil on me, Ricky Bobby? Don't they going to do just, a just Devil Man Crybaby they, one, they tr- Devil Just leave that alone. Whole time, though. Ah, when, bro, oh, you know what? You know what? You know what? Dogs. You know what? You know what? I have to I have to be the, the black, the odd sheep, the black odd sheep. Uh-huh. There is there is one anime adaptation I will low key go to bat for. Mm-hmm. 
the Giver. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> like the I, honestly, you know who did the best anime adaptation of all time? The niggas on YouTube who did the My Hero Academia one. Which yeah, one? That that uh fan with the, with the, the black with nigga. The, yes. Yeah. That shit's fire. Yeah, yeah that, that shit is fire. Bruh, that shit bruh. is fire. They probably I need a whole series. I need a series. I need a series. I need a series. I need a series. You, you hear me? Everyone on YouTube. That's just fire. That's just fire. Matter of fact, you know, you know who's you know who's in it? Fucking uh the nigga from Hoes. The oh, light skinned oh, nigga. Yeah. yeah, facts. Yeah. The light skinned nigga from Zeroni? Yeah. The curly hair nigga. Yeah, <laughs> that was in like that Hector Zeroni. He in that gym, yeah. That's just icy fire. Like the fight scenes. That's is, what I'm saying. Like, but you the know, fight why? Scene is, that's yeah. because the that's fight because scenes are like that. They're fans. The, the directors and the writers who are making these anime adaptations, they aren't fans. They just know that anime that is, is the becoming fact. mainstream, and you can get a mm. check for having a mid anime movie or even even low tier because the fans want to believe. Have y'all seen? Yeah, have y'all seen Anime House and like video game house and like RDC? Oh yeah, love yeah. Oh, them. Yeah. Yeah, fire, love though, like, the last Jane was like that. Shouts to RDC, man. Love y'all, yeah. man. Yo, RDC. We should, love RDC. We should, we should, we should take a trip. We should do like we should actually go to one of them DreamCon Jane's. They little they have an event. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, definitely. I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna hold y'all. I'm not. I'm not gonna hold y'all. One of my favorite OnlyFans jumps was. <laughs> Was out there, Jane, busting it wide open, and I'm gonna definitely try to make it down there. <laughs> at Dream, at All right. RDC Con. Wow, wow. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> down there because she an anime jump, so she be she be doing the whole. Bro, I be RDC ran through that joint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, shout out to King Vader too. Shout out to RDC and King Vader, bro. Yeah, shout out to King Vader. Yeah, King Vader. I'm not gonna Vader hold you. Way. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan. Don't of do it. Don't. Oh, Ooh, you. Not gonna hold you. We could have worked with him. Cut that out, B man. <laughs> y'all, y'all y'all can't. cut that part out. If if I, I see, mean, it's, it's, it's good. I'm Everybody sorry, bro. Their own opinion. I'm sorry. If I see, if I see this shit one more time, that, that if you want to do this, man, we, we got to sell it. But every, <laughs> but every time, every. He gonna Every be like, hey, uh, hey, 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 you yeah, yeah, yeah. nigga. I heard what you said, Damien Cephas. I heard what you said. That's what's up. Need know what I'm about. Hey, hey, Need know what I'm about. What's up? What's poppin', fool? Now y'all scrapping in the middle of a pocket lag. What's poppin', fool? Hey, we do that. <laughs> Chill out. Do that, All right. Why do people feel the need to make live action movies? I guess we already answered that question. Arrogance, anime clout, validation. Yeah, money. They ugly and they mom don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it, everybody. Let's move on to comics and anime. Nerds who rock Jays. Let's do it. What's everybody reading? It's got some good oh, shit it's... right now, man. Like I said, in oh, terms of... jump. Let me see what I'm reading right now. Um I need suggestions for the time. I'm lagging. I mean, Tower of God came back, so I've been on that. Uh, let's see, Solo Leveling, uh, uh, Juji Kaino, Rok, Ro- I can't pronounce that, Rokunin, something like that, beating that droid. Um, obviously, Jujitsu Kaisen. Um, hey, what else am I reading? It's a couple things. I'm still, I'm still on World Trigger. Um, mm. I gotta stop watching that actually. Yeah, I mess with World Trigger. You know, still keeping up with all the Itsukais, you know, the reincarnated as a slime and all those. those Yo, how is guys. that going? Because I fuck with that thing. How's that going? It's good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, that joint, that joint is fire. It, it comes out monthly, but it's fire. I, I saw the first season of the anime and I really fuck with it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good joint. Um, Maho, Mashoku, Mashoku Tensei. Uh, also a monthly joint, but you know, pretty good. It's in a little boring place right now. Oh, be the beginning has been a, a out of nowhere. I mean, the beginning of the end has been an out of nowhere classic. Um, this is Nick talking. Of, this is Nick. Uh, Nick <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I, can I ask you a question, bro? What the hell? Yes, sir. What, what is it? What is it like being a real live pimp? What is it? What is it like? Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> Somebody oh my goodness! Hey man, you know somebody got somebody got to do it, right? 
How strong is your pimp hand? Like, what, hey, what do you? What is? Perfect, what is it bench? What is your? What is your left hand bench as opposed to the right hand? More it benches <laughs> more than my right hand. <laughs> what do you prefer, left or right? Um, I mean, you know, the left hand, left hand, strong hand. <laughs> Okay, I have, a, I have one more question. I have one more question. I have one more, hey, one more question. Back. I have, one, I have, I have, have, I have, I have one more question. One more question. I have one more question. Real quick. Real quick. Add in the remember the Titans if, strong side. If <laughs> if I have I have real one real I question. Shit, I have yeah. one real question. Cool. If if your pimping was to get exposed, right? Would you rather it be on Maury or Jenny Jones? Um. Oh. I was, I was gonna say probably Maury just because I don't even really know who Jenny Jones is. You don't know about Jenny Jones. Oh, about mm-hmm. Jenny Jones. We all in the same age group. You gotta know Jenny Jones. I mean, I know Maury. I know Jerry. Even though I don't see Jerry around no more. Um, I don't know Jenny Jones. Martel. No, Jerry has a whole court show now. Oh uh, no, Jerry Springer. Yeah, that's Jerry. Yeah, that's Jerry, that's about Jerry Springer. That's Sukiana, Sukiana was on. was on that jump, bro. The little, the little <laughs> Jesus Christ! Nah, her and her gay cousin was on that shit, arguing about sucking dick and all that wow shit. shit. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh-oh. I was telling people, I was getting people hip to the anime. Whenever, yes, uh, yes. Whenever God of High School comes back, um, as the last joint came back out in August, so whenever that comes out, I will be gracious to continue to read that. Um, I found a new webtoon. It's called, well, I didn't find it. It's been out, but like, you know, looked it up. I was like, hmm, looks interesting. It's called Distant Sky. Um, it's a, uh, what, a survival type joint where they're, you know, this boy, he wakes up underground in the pitch black and he's trying to escape like man eating bugs and like, uh, tigers and shit because like the earth caved in and so now he's yeah they're all underground right now it's really deep bro like that joint has a couple of twists and you're just like oh okay then definitely see, didn't see that coming um of course you just you guys in black clover fire force fire force needs to kind of like wrap this up bro like they dragging it out bro Fire Force is dragging right now, and I, I did. I did catch up on um, Black Clover, where the anime stopped off at. I don't know what happens after that, but I'm waiting for the anime. We're not, we not even too far past that. Fire yeah. Force did what a lot of enemies that are like rushing do, and they just write themselves into an unbeatable enemy that the hero has to defeat by ass pulling. Ganondorf or like fucking yo I don't want I, wait, I don't want no I don't want no my hero spoilers I'm not put up they're not my hero so I'm at Fire Force Fire Force is I oh, mean yeah, more, my hero has done the same thing but no, I mean, oh, oh, oh my god oh my god don't bro, do my that. hero is so mid right now bro <laughs> <laughs> well I, I I did like like Imagine. like the new villain well I'm I'm only anime I don't do manga but I do like the new villain uh what is it, Recipro? Whatever, whatever his name was. Yeah, Destro. Oh, he, he was cool for like an episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't catch up though, so I, I, I don't Bro, know. Bro, Reed Destro was so overhyped and underutilized. <laughs> he was yeah. gone in an episode for real. Yeah, like, they rushed that arc though. Like yeah, so that arc was only like six long, episodes. Yeah. Like they just and, like, think, smashed like, that shit yeah, together. Yeah. I'd be right back, y'all. Yeah. Bro, hella overhyped, right. hella underutilized. Uh, just 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 one for all as a plot device is just ass at this point to me <laughs> it just feels like they're rushing the story like maybe the rumors of Harakoshi is just like trying to wrap this shit up because it just seems like the basing is just like all right i'm, I'm just trying to, trying to get this over i get tired of these niggas writing good stories and then just pulling the bleach mm. yeah, i don't think we've gotten there yet i mean that I mean, it's not there yet, but I, the rate that is going, mm. it's, it's been declining. And I think he like, hates women. <sighs> you said what? I think Horikoshi hates women. Yeah. This is the little thing <laughs> going on in these last few, these last few arcs. Of all the women to, heroes. We got... Yeah. Uh... Then they, they just be, and now they just be introducing random people that be cool, and then they be gone. 
Yeah, this is that's what I don't like. It's like we're getting so many new characters towards the end of this story instead of developing the characters that we already have. Like, who are these niggas? A classic Why bleach mistake. Bruh. <laughs> I'm tired of this, bro. Like, I'm so tired. Like, they it's like the anime world. It's crazy because like the good and the good, the good manga writers, right? The good ones, mm-hmm. like these these dudes are going like do change, not change over, they're doing great work. They get sick mm-hmm. all the time. Then you got the ones who actually make it to close out their story. They just bleach it. Mm-hmm. Too demanding, man. They get burnt out. Like you gotta chill with that industry and stop burning my hero out. Don't, my out. hero does not deserve to say they've been burnt out yet until they hit like half an hour <laughs> to chapters. I'm surprised the youngins, like you know, Oda is going this far, or like the chick who's doing, or the guy I forgot who does got a high school, like. Tower of God, bro. Like, young, making content that deep. Right. Ridiculous. Look, Naruto has seven hundred chapters. Um, hmm. And I'm as far as reading Naruto. You know, the anime had a lot of spoilers, but as far as reading Naruto, yeah. I never felt like it was mid. Felt like it was good it to was like about mid. <laughs> to me. Not reading Naruto was never mid. <laughs> The first and Naruto. watching it was never mid. Like Naruto was, yeah, that was that shit was lit for me. I mean, it up until Naruto. Kaguya, basically. The first Naruto up into the tuning exams was mid. Get out. So sir. <sighs> well, KB's opinion is not valid. I can't do that. I can't do that. I think relatively, you can say it was mid. Because because Ford, it had to hook me. Like, it hooked yeah, me. It was set up. Bro. So, like, I mean, you it hooked exactly. the world. No. Yeah. Exactly. You can't call the setup, but man. That's, but that's honestly when I started, like, actually paying attention to Naruto. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was on, but it's not like I was, like, really watching. Yeah. It. Like, it didn't really kick in. The tuning exam is what hooked you in. Like, everything else yeah, is like, oh, exactly. this is pretty good. And then it's like, oh, that's what shit. I'm saying. That, is, that yeah. whole beginning until you get to the tuning exam was just mad. But 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 once you seen the Zabuza part, you was like, yeah, "Oh, this yeah, right now, the Zabuza fight was kind of overrated too." But it, yeah, but and, it hooked uh, you up, and that exposed really. me to some stuff that I didn't even know they did in anime. So you know, yeah, I was like, "Wow, okay, so okay, right. let's do it." And and I think my problem with anime is in my is my bar my bar is set too high. I, I realized this. My You're bar bougie. is set too high. You're bougie. Um, and my bar is set too high because I've had greats. I've come across too many greats in my life. And even underrated and unsung hero greats. So now when I got stuff that's overhyped, like my hero doing what it's doing right now, it makes me upset. My hero every second. I, like, so I guess you would have gone with it, but I feel you on the decline of like my hero in terms of the quality in the last like arc or so. Ever since like what the uh the hospital arc when Shigaraki got like stupid OP, where it's just like, how the fuck are we gonna stop mm. this guy now? Like, right? Like, oh, but then that's making me even stronger. Like, I, I, I want somebody, I want somebody to tell me any part of Full Metal Alchemist was mid. No. I'd fight them. Okay, exactly. I can tell you, um, no, the please. anime, the an, the anime. What you about to say, Mac? No, I was about to say. I know what you about to say. What you about to say? <laughs> no, I was gonna say the anime that's coming out that I'm looking forward to watching is I think uh Chainsaw Man it comes out December 20. Uh, mm-hmm. well, yeah, yeah, season two or whatever. I just started reading hey, Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw yeah. Man is a is a great read all the way up until like the last little few chapters, and then you're kind of just like, mm. I, I was talking about the anime. I'm re- I, I want to see the anime. I don't want to. I'm read just it. saying. I'm just saying in the actual manga though. So like, hopefully they don't. Hopefully they don't try and pull up the promised Neverland and just like cut a boatload of shit out just to jump. Oh my god! Promise to Neverland, so sad. When I got, I got to update my top five too, because I, I put on my top five at the bonfire. I got to take out my hero and put JoJo's. I'm sorry, JoJo's as a whole is in my top five. I'm sorry. That's just me. It's, it's my personal. No, I'm, look, I'm not mad at you, especially with the what you're replacing it with. Ah, look at him! Look at him! Look at him! Look I'm at just him. saying I had an ally. You, you, I'm just saying that you you switched you switched something that is gonna go down as mid mm. for something that is, is good. <laughs> Jojo Jojo's yeah. following is gigantic. Jojo's is lit, and they have a new season coming out. Stone Ocean, go go watch Stone that, Ocean please, everybody. Is real. 
Uh oh, it gets realer. It gets realer, realer. Now, yeah. if that's uh, everything anime. Um, yeah, I guess I'm trying to think of if there's any new animes. Anime that I mean, key, nah, you know, about web, to, web tools are on the come up. Web tools are definitely yeah. more, more web, solo leveling. Know. Uh, yeah, well, I was I was about to segue into chronic comics, so you know that's why. Yeah. Would you count webtoons as comics? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely comics. Okay. Like you said, that's the new wave of comics. Webtoons are fucking blowing the fuck up right now, dog. Like. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Start yeah. More anime, more about, more anime uh, if you know webtoons. comics, you know like actual physical books are like dying right now. Yeah, and all the big yeah, two like publishers are scrambling to try to get to that webtoons format because they've seen how successful it is. That's why that Bruce Wayne family adventure shit is like popping like shit for DC right now. And Marvel's mm-hmm. trying to do a version of that on Marvel Unlimited, which is not so good. But I mean, uh, they try and they, they've always been late to the bandwagon. Though, the yeah, band. they fucked up. They was late for that because the, <laughs> the DC got their shit on actual webtoons. So niggas can just pop that shit open and see some new batman shit even casuals and fucking jump on that but like marvel's like you have to i will say this marvel will say this. dc has always had a better a better digital presence can i can i make a little segue to not a segue but like a a, a thing that's coming up that it's actually been surprisingly good mm-hmm. these video game netflix series I don't games. Like, i don't i don't know i can't i can't but i mean like the diab i mean the the the, the dota movie uh, the League of Legends show, uh, Witcher, uh, like like yeah, you know, is good. these these like show, these like movie game these game you know stuff that Netflix keeps putting out they're all like really good. Shouts to uh, Jennifer and uh, Witcher too, the Witcher series. She's a very good actor actress. Yeah, I think Netflix is doing a better job of like licensing shit. <laughs> That is better instead of trying to create yeah. their own shit. They're just waiting for good shit to just license it. Like is that Jupiter's rising. Ah, well, well, Jupiter's rising wasn't based off of video. I'm specifically talking about stuff that's based off of video games. Uh, Jupiter I'm rising could have been good. If, Netflix in general. I feel like that could have been a good show. If they knew what, they were, what the fuck they were doing. They didn't. Have, they were arrogant. But we have to get back to chronic comics led by. Uh, Pastor C. Chisel. Well, I mean, if you're talking about Jupiter's Legacy, it is based off a comic. It's just, I, I've read the comic. I didn't think the comic was super interesting, and they made the show even more boring. Oh, so, like, shit, shit, shit. You said, Jupiter, you said Jupiter Ascending, right? Uh, Jupiter's, I thought uh, you, uh, Jupiter's Legacy. I, I, I thought you were talking about the other shit, fucking Alter Carbon, for some reason. <laughs> oh, is that, that might be a comic, too. It's oh. not. It's, yeah, I don't I, think it's, so. it's a book, but it's not a comic. But yeah, like, Jupiter Ascending, well, that that was dead on arrival. Like none of the characters were likable. The effects were trash. Like that code yeah. shit blew me from the get go. Like that shit was. Go so check cool. out our uh, bonfire episode of Jupiter's Legacy on the bonfire feed and everywhere you hear podcasts and watch YouTube videos and all that. Oh yeah, with great value, Dark Side. Yeah, they they lost me with the Tyler Perry wigs on that one. And like I said, the comic <laughs> is like not fucking particularly like exciting to me either. It's like a six issue like comic that's like, okay, this is this is all right. But like I was expecting it to be like way better than the show. Like, let me see the source material. And that shit was mid too. So I was like, man, what the fuck yeah. did they even make this for, dog? Like who who wanted this? Like who was like, yeah, make Jupiter's like fucking leg like what whatever. <laughs> no. I, I don't know who I, it was for, I... but it's gone now. <laughs> Can I use that to segue into this one thing I've been I I've wanted to say this on a platform for a long time. Okay. I feel like things like oh, this are for me a reminder that the general populace doesn't realize that like as a whole, comics are kind of fucking stupid, kind of fucking boring, and very, very niche. There are a lot of comic books that you really have to enjoy the medium as a whole to really enjoy. And a lot of that does not mm-hmm. translate well to popular media. And you see this all the time with some of these properties they try to, to they try to adapt. Like anime is a prime example of this. Yeah. You can't take every niche thing and make it a popular right thing. Now, it, it doesn't work at all, all the time. Most times it doesn't. It happens with video games all the time. You know why video game movies don't work? Mm-hmm. Because video game movies in, require the user 
to do things. That's what makes the, the experience unique to the user. Yeah. You can't do that with a movie. Same with anime. Like anime, most concepts in anime are very, very heavy or like very, very wild, which requires a lot of visual representation. And for movies, you can't do that because a movie is after an hour and a half, your 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 attention starts to wane. That's why anime is so bright and colorful. They have to they have to draw you in. With movies, you can do that too much. And that's why that's why a lot of anime doesn't translate. Like they do this to yep. media, like it just doesn't work. Like mm-hmm. imagine if they try to do like a promise to Neverland live action, it would be ass. <sighs> Maybe in terms of manga, but I, I would argue that it that it does work because like half of the fucking media properties we see are based off of obscure ass comic books. I agree that if you don't well, like the medium of comic books, then don't fucking read comic books. But it's other ways to be introduced to those characters because like every other movie that comes out is a fucking comic movie. Uh, like we had a fucking are they, division show. Like we think, but are think, they but are they all good though? And do they all push the? Do they, but they do, are they all good or do, and then they, do they all push things forward? All of them, like say, or are they just so many properties appeal. out there? Like so are we like, grouping everything together because it's a think, lot of fucking shit. Yeah, but some stuff is only good in the medium of being a comic. So like to CJ's point, to CJ's point, there are some people that have found a formula. You know, your Netflix, your uh, your Amazon. Your, uh, like we got we got a whole of in, we got an invincible show that's super popular. Like we, like, yeah, it's not, obscure you know, comic uh, shit that is on super well. There's a, a lot split, of these sweet two show. There's like there are. It's not yeah. even just from the big two. There are some studios that have found yeah. a formula. But invincible that is also works. still like a very like traditional comic book story though. Not it's really. Spider- it's, it it's looks like it in verse. I mean, but invincible is basically Spider Man <laughs> if he was Superman's son. But not no. all the way through. I mean, kind of from the in the beginning a little bit, but Invincible takes a whole lot of turns, which is why it's it such goes a left. But I mean, no it goes ben left. In Invincible. I mean, there <laughs> is, but it's, I mean, there is, but it's Dark Uncle Ben. Drag is Dark, dark, dark Uncle, Uncle Ben. ben. <laughs> drag, Uncle is, ben. drag is basically Dark Uncle Ben. Like a lot of the yeah. things that happen to Invincible happen to Spider Man in some way, shape, or form. But like, it's still a very traditional superhero story. Like. I'm just saying, like, nowadays, it seems like it's more likely you know, that a superhero property is going to hit than miss. It's like, the ones that yeah. miss is every once in a yeah, while. Yeah, like, because, Why the I Last mean, Man, Jupiter's Legacy, but in between the ones that miss, it's like five that hit. Umbrella yeah, Academy, but, 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 that, but, that, like, but that brings back to my point. The ones that don't really hit are usually the ones that are, like, very, very ingrained in the niche of comic books visual storytelling. I would still go back to like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and the Suicide Squad with like fucking Rat Catcher 2 and shit are like really but great. That's still, but that's still very like stereotypical comic book stories though. But no, I mean that's only And they're attached to like a stab Like you got to think about the general populace. Didn't nobody know about Suicide Squad. Like mm-hmm. ain't nobody and the know. first ain't one bombed. Know. It wasn't until James Gunn took his formula to that franchise that it got better. The first Suicide Squad was a bomb on all fronts. I know people who like the first Suicide Squad. Honestly, I know people it's who say niche. the first Suicide Squad is better yeah, than the second one. I, I've that's heard people crazy. say that. It's niche. It's like a niche yeah, but, thing. but that's my point. My point is that is that the general populace don't care about certain things that we care about. Like Non-comic book fans are watching these movies for like shock value and entertainment more so than like getting the character or the or the story correct yeah and that's why i said like to cj's point like most of these movies are going to hit even if they're not comic book accurate yeah most of them aren't like i said they're simplified like you said you yeah, can't give not. them that complicated weird shit so they simplify it for general audiences and the shit is good yeah but you can tell which ones are going to hit which ones are not like the obscure stuff is obviously not going to hit but some of the stuff that's like more baseline to the, I mean, what what is your definition of obscure though? Because like even Iron Man was somewhat uh, obscure to general people before his movie came out. Like these aren't yeah, like very much so. mystery, Iron, mystery men, mystery men, or flame and carry. I think a good example of obscure is Watchmen. That's not obscure to me though. That's not that's not, not obscure to you. But how many niggas you know know about Watchmen? Most of them. No, 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 like, I, nah, but like I hang around nerds though, so like we know about this. Type yeah, of I'm shit. saying like I, I could walk outside right now, pick ten random people, and maybe two will know Watchmen. 
Well, I'll tell you this. I have never in my life read a comic or manga. I just watch stuff. So, my, I mean, you know, I'm not really a, a good sample size, but, you know, I just watch stuff and I learn as I go. So when I watch it, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's good. Okay, that's bad. And they kind of make me want to, you know, look up shit. Like I, I've looked up, like I watched hours of YouTube videos over all the goddamn invincible characters because I was interested in it. So, you don't, you don't, I mean, I don't know nothing about comics, but, you know, some of the shit does work. So, CJ, what is your comic pools of the week? Oh, uh, this week, some of the stuff I'm catching up from last week, but I, I wanted to catch up on the new Milestone books um, since they brought back Milestone and Static and uh, Icon and Rocket and shit. And um, mm. I have to say, like, they start a little rocky, both of them. They both were a little, like, because they started with zero issues and shit, so you needed, like, two origin books. So, like, the, the like it's, it's a little sketchy to start, but they really settle in, both of those books. Really fucking enjoying um, Icon and Rocket just to see, like, a good version of, like, a black Superman, because, like, if, if I wanted a, a black Superman movie, I just want an icon movie. Like, I don't need a Val Zod hmm. fucking, you know, nice. Michael B. Jordan alternate Superman. Like, we already have a black Superman and, like, he gets no <laughs> love ever. Jordan, bro. And, like, exactly. this nigga tried to end slavery. He's, like, a real one. Like, I want to see that shit. <laughs> yeah. I want to see Val Zod carrying the heads of slave owners or our, our, our icon and fucking doing some, some real nigga shit. Like, overturning the world economy. Doing some shit Superman should do but never does. Like, why don't you mm-hmm. end crime? Nigga, like, go fucking do something. Like, because important. that would be totalitarianism. That's why. It would it, it would end free will. Yeah, I didn't say go full injustice. I'm just saying, like, you, you could do more <laughs> with your powers as Superman other than just be like, oh, no, I don't know what to fucking do and shit. I'm just going to be a fucking bumbling reporter and fucking pretend to not to, like, come on, dog. Like, you could do a lot more. I mean, that. but, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I just, I just feel like superheroes can only do so much right, before, like, it just depends on the stakes. I think they, that's yeah. why I like the comic because they really get into that. Like Rocket, it's like the original origin. Like Rocket, he's an alien. Rocket basically is like convinces him to be a hero. He's been hiding. The government knows about him. He's worked with the government, but he's like, yeah, I know, I know always, the background. Yeah, all that original yeah. origin right. and shit. So it's, it's a lot more of like the realistic repercussions where she's like, and drugs should, in the neighborhood. This nigga ends drugs question, can, can worldwide and then has to deal Yo, with Do the you like actually like buy the books or you like read online? A little bit of both depends on how much money I got. I try to support the books, mm-hmm. but you know, I feel you a lot like of books that could, and shit, you know, because like that's why I kind of got out of the, the comic book game. Like, I was just tired of buying like 10 fucking books, a yeah, month. like for like three four dollars a piece. That's just not cheap, that shit adds up, yeah. yeah. Like, so I, had, I had to let it go, I had to let it, had to let it go early, but when I got to college, I was like, I can't spend. 50 bucks a month on like four or five books. But I can't that's why like Marvel Unlimited and like Comixology and shit like that mm-hmm. is good though. You do get a good value mm-hmm. where if like you're reading a bunch of shit, you can just read that shit every week for like a monthly subscription that makes it worth it instead of it. Like for me, who wants to, to pick up 10 bucks a week, yeah, that shit's gonna... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, used to, I, I, I really just started waiting for fucking shit to get published in graphic novels. For, for yeah, I, I'm a person like that too. If, if it's not like current, if I could wait for it, I, I probably will just buy the trade. <laughs> Like I might just like yeah. I might just read it online or like bootleg it until the trade comes out and then buy the trade if I like fuck with the story because I do I do like having trades and just I like this the whole story connect collect it but like for the ongoing storylines it's just like uh like any weekly show or like manga you get frustrated with waiting week to week sometimes where it's just like I yeah. don't fucking know what's going on instead of being like I want to wait four weeks for this book or all the delays mm-hmm. and shit that happen in comics but. I really like the new uh, Milestone books, especially the static book. The art on that shit is like super anime inspired. It's like reading a colored manga. Are they are they still doing the whole like he got his power through the Black Lives Movement thing? Yeah, yeah. They retconned it. It's like they were at a protest hmm. and shit and the fucking gas canister exploded at the protest <laughs> instead of a gang shootout. So it's like a Black Lives Matter protest and then everybody I'm got just gassed. Not a fan of it. Not a huge fan of, of the change, but I feel like it, it works for what they're doing with the story. And in terms of like making it seem like it's more, it's not just like all gangsters and thugs and just Virgil who got the Big Bang, like in the original junk, because he's at like a gang shootout. So it makes sense. Or he's like the only hero because a bunch of niggas there doing some wild <laughs> shit. They got yeah. gas. And this one is like, there's more good guys and bad. It's just random bang babies because it's like a protest. It's going to be fucking racist yeah. and Nazis at the protest. It's going to be kids. It's going to be. So I, I like that it's more. I didn't like. I it's a little on the nose for me. Though. I didn't like that part. Like I didn't like that part at all. I'm I'm a firm believer that like if you're doing a fantasy work, the minute you introduce a real world thing like racism, 
you automatically take me out of the story. I feel because like it's necessary. This is milestone, though. This is necessary. Like, yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like it, the black I feel like, company. I feel like that can work, but when you tie his existence as a hero to something like that, I feel like it doesn't last. You feel me? I feel like because of how ambiguous the first one was, like, I mean, I haven't read it. I haven't read it myself. <laughs> I will read it just because, like, just, just to fill it out. I don't I think know, when you man. tie things to a bigger concept, that makes it last longer because because that concept it depend, has it depend, a lot of depth. It depends on the it depends on the situation. Uh, I mean, I feel like it, it works for what it it is, though. I mean, like it's 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 a device for Virgil and a bunch of other people to become bang babies. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't like you could take the Black yeah. Lives Matter out of it, but it, racial injustice protests, like Nick said, is going to be relevant forever. <laughs> like at this at yeah. this rate, there's gonna be injustice for a while. So like this is, and yeah, like and I said, this is static. A, this is milestone. So they're not gonna shy away from real world or racial issues. That's like part of the draw of the book. So mm-hmm. yeah. and the Static Shock movie is coming soon. Static yeah. Shock. They say that soon. shit every year. They say that. Shit. They uh, <laughs> confirmed the DC fandom that is in production mm-hmm. now, and then also there's a uh, animated milestone uni- or uh, like milestone movie that they're working on that'll probably come out first. So I'm looking forward to yeah. that. That'll have hardware. All I know is iconic. All I know static. is all them I regular is. DC niggas better not be attached to this movie. All I know is that <laughs> I've been hearing about the Shazam movie since 2007 in Wizard Magazine. No way. So until it's it coming. actually comes out, I will remain silent. It's coming. Like they, I mean, they I'm just happy to have actual, Milestone back because, uh, like I was telling my boy earlier, whatever. Static is an iconic hero for yeah. kids growing up. That TV show is iconic for our, for the era that it came out in. He was a lot of mm. people's first like real black superhero, even though he's not really a creation of DC. Like I said, he was bought you know, from DC, from Milestone, but at the same time, like, Mm -hmm. he's a very important seminal character, and he's been out of the spotlight for legal reasons, and not because people don't want to see the character and shit. So, like, Mm -hmm. it's just going to be nice to have Static back. He is the Black Spider-Man. That's fucked up when you think about it. That's fucked up when you think about it. DC really booked himself a nigga. Damn. Because they have a diversity problem, like I said, because all their heroes are like fucking middle-aged, boring white men and shit. It's like Bruce Wayne, Hal Jordan, fucking Barry Allen, Clark Kent. Like, okay, all the same okay, see, this, okay, see, like, I feel like that's that's the case from a surface level. But, to but be the surface fair, is what sells, though. The surface is where they make the ball. And that's, and that's a lot of comic book companies' problem, especially DC and Marvel. They've, let's take, okay, DC, for example. DC and DC has spent the last the last half of what a hundred years basically building up the same three heroes. Okay, the problem with that is yeah. those three heroes don't always fit into the mold of where society is at. Let's not say always; they almost never do. They're invented in like the forties. Well, yeah, the, mean, like, okay, okay, okay. The characters Superman. themselves, yes, but the archetypes, no. The problem is with DC, their characters are the archetypes. That's the problem with DC. Their characters are the archetypes. So it's hard to rewrite archetypes without it being derivative of anything. Think about it. If you have a strong character that can do a bunch of stuff and it's a a very good person, you're going to compare them to Superman. If your character is a vigilante that goes against law and injustice, you're going to compare them to Batman, if your character is a strong female lead, whatever, if your character is a, f- a fast character, they're going to be compared to the Flash, which are all DC characters. The problem is with DC, all of their good characters are archetypes, and it's hard to rewrite archetypes. Yeah, it's like you said, because they came first. Like, all those are the first of their t- like, exact- time. Exactly. <laughs> Superman like- is literally, super- whether people like it or not, Superman is the first superhero. I mean, yeah. now, I mean, y- yes, I mean, but for me now, like, whenever I think of a morally good character who does right by people, I just go to Black Panther. Like, that's where my mind is at. But even that's still... That's like a conscious decision. But that's still derivative of Superman. What? No. Well, not necessarily. I mean, I... Yeah, I, no, I don't not necessarily. <laughs> no. But, like, at the same time, not necessarily in character and, like, design. But you no. know what I mean, like, no, DC's, not at all. Like, I feel like DC's problem is they're trapped like, in their hey, own history. It's like their issues with all these crises is because they have this long history that they want to embrace, 
but then that history makes it too fucking complicated for new readers to jump on. So they keep trying to simplify that history and then they'd be like, oh shit, the history is why people liked us. So they had to reinsert the history and they've been doing that shit for like 20 years with crises yeah. and uncrises and DC flash has had flash point in the last yeah. 10 years in the last 10 years DC has had five reboots. Yeah, the fucking um Doomsday Clock and then the fucking uh Dark Knight's Metal and shit and, like they rebooted again. And you know you know, you know how I feel shit. about Doomsday I mean, Clock. You I mean, know how I feel about Doomsday Clock. It's 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 what? It's what? About eight eight niggas in this room, six niggas in this room. How many of us actually care about Superman? I don't. Uh, I never did. He's little. too vanilla. He has no personality. That's why. That's, I think and that's why the movie, that's why he's Superman, not a successful you don't have character. Have a personality to be Superman. You used to be vanilla ice cream and be yeah. Superman. Like DC, the thing DC is, though, and the their, thing is, not, their characters are not that successful anymore. Like they're they're slow. Like I mean, okay, Batman, yes, but like Superman, uh, New Wonder Woman. Um, think about when it. Was the last time somebody even talked about Green Lantern? Like Superman. Ain't nobody. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so like. Green Lantern is my favorite superhero. I'm not, again, this isn't a slight at Green Lantern. I like Green Lantern, especially the black Green Lantern. My point is, though, is that these characters are, are the, the, the DC highlight characters are really boring and they're really mainstream, but that is slowly changing as we become more into a like diversity and inclusive society. We're starting to get uh, a lot of, you know, multicultural characters. And so these quote unquote archetype characters are slowly phasing out. The phasing out process is going to be long, but it's happening. It's not the even problem, that long, though. Like they the hired problem with that is though, for that reason. The problem with that is though, a yeah. lot of the diverse characters aren't that good. Yeah, that's the problem. Like they hired them just to do right. these diverse characters, but like they're not that interesting. Like he brought in Naomi, put Naomi on the Justice League. He's creating like he did the John Kent to age him up and send him to the League of Superheroes, and he came back gay and shit. He did all that. Sh- like Bendis. I don't that's like anything thing. he's done in DC. I mean, yet, DC but like, that's what he's wrong. there for. Michael Bendis. Yeah, like Bendis the has most, done some great the, stuff in the past. He's done some awful The shit. most decisive person in comics for the last 10 years. You either Maybe. like Bendis' shit or you don't. He's he's hit or miss. Like he's done some great shit, like creating Miles Morales home run. That shit was great. Doing the um the new Avengers. Like that was I that's great. Then he oh, did shit I like love Civil New, War II, I love New like, Avengers. I love New Avengers. I, yeah, I New Avengers is fucking run. great. Like it was the best. I, I, this, it was the first time the Avengers were fucking cool ever, mm-hmm. ever in the history. Like it was the first time the Avengers were like, oh shit. Marvel had the idea instead of putting um fucking the most random people like White Vision and Hawkeye on the team. Why don't you put your most popular no, characters on the super team like DC does? Like you know how the Justice League has Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman and shit. How about you put like Wolverine, Spider Man, and like all your most popular people? On and one it team. was amazing. And David Finch's art was awesome. Yeah, it's and a then great they iconic got, book. Then they got fucking ahead of themselves and ruined it by being fucking Marvel. <laughs> you like that sometimes. Hey, also I did listen. Wanna listen, add, I'm I'm a jaded fanboy. Okay, I, I'm a I jaded fanboy. We can we can tell. I did want to add that if everybody didn't know that um. They did cast Blue Beetle. It's the uh, lead character from uh, Cobra Kai. The uh, Hispanic guy, I don't know his name. But no, he's going to be up. Blue Beetle. I think Good they made it. I, I haven't seen I Cobra Kai. Yeah, he, he's great. I, 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 I like him. So, yeah, yeah, good for him. That's, good. That's a good look for him. Yeah, yeah. Be a cool movie. Mm-hmm. I could have called that one. That's actually a good casting. All right, CJ, Same. is that all the comics? That's all the comics uh, pull for this week. That's all on, on the DC side. Like I said, on Marvel right now, like uh, I'm still like the X Men books have hit a snag. I mean, still some of them are great, some of them are getting canceled, and we're we're doing Inferno right now, which is like amazing. Mm-hmm. So we're getting the mm-hmm. end of uh, Jonathan Hickman's era on the X Men, the the blueprint, the goat who just who 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 really did his thing on X Men. So we're, we're sad to see it go, but Inferno is fucking lit. The first first two episodes, I mean, the first two issues of Inferno are. As good as advertised, but you know, it's more of a political story, so it's not like a lot of action and punching people and shit. It's a lot of like mystique, mm-hmm. like finessing people, and like a lot of like politics and like the mutant government and basically Xavier and Magneto fucking up. But it's awesome. Like X Men books are still in a decent place. The ones that I don't like are getting canceled. And um, mm-hmm. I caught up on um the Eternals um run that is highly acclaimed right now, and I had to come back to it because when I I. I read like the first two issues and that shit was a little boring the first time. And then I watched the Eternals movie and I was like, all right, 
let me give this shit another shot. And it actually is really good, but it, it has a similar issue of the movie where it's like, this shit is just like a lot of information and it's like a lot of like, you know, it's a really slow read. It's a lot, it's giving you a lot more information than it is giving you like action and shit. But in the comics, it, they have a really great storyline of like, Thanos is now the Prime Eternal and that shit is super fucking mm. interesting. And they're really getting into like Thanos' connection to the Eternals and like more of like what their culture actually is in terms of like in the comics. But they simplified a lot in the MCU, but in the comics, it's more of like Olympia, like they got their city, they're immortal. They're having all their own politics with the Unimind and some of the shit that we've seen in the movie. Some of the characters are like different because there was no Zeros and there's like a lot more mm-hmm. like important characters that weren't in the movie. So, which I was kind of thrown off that Zeros wasn't in the movie, but because he's kind of like mm-hmm. the Zeus, like usually is the mm-hmm. Prime Eternal. The Prime Eternal. They yeah, could be saving him for the next movie. Yeah, or um, fucking Icarus is usually like your main character. He's like your Superman analog and. I like that, you know, mm-hmm. what they did in the movie is kind of subvert that and make Icarus the bad guy, but it, it's cool. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's a really good, good read. It's seven issues in right now, but it's really good stuff with the Thanos. Bringing Thanos into the Eternals mix is a really fucking mm-hmm. good idea that they've never really done anything good with in the comics. Like, everyone, like, it's known that Thanos is an Eternal, but they never really touched that shit until now. So it'd be interesting if they bring that into the movie since, you know, the post credit scene we saw Thanos' brother pull up and, mm-hmm. you know, hit the straight stroll and shit. So maybe they're going in that direction, but they're going to connect Thanos more to the Eternals like they have in the more recent comics. If we ever see Thanos again, because if he is an Eternal, that means he should be immortal. And um, we saw like a little factory of Cersei, so they still might lean into the aspect of like mm-hmm. the Eternals are immortal and like they could just be brought back whenever the fuck. Especially when she's like, oh, you're keeping our memories too and shit. So it's like, I think they did I leave I feel that like that was open. a misstep. Making them robots. Yeah, that shit was weird. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they but they kind of are in the, in the in the comics too. So I mean, they, they're not really robots, but like it's they're such advanced technology. They are synthetic beings that just get made by a machine, like Vision. Yeah, they not now nah, they're like more organic than Vision. Yeah, but like mm-hmm. it's like, like nano, it's like nano alien super space technology though. Like they they are kind of machines, but well beyond like machines of what we would know. It's like Fastos is fucking technology and shit. Like they're using celestial mm. tech, but they are essentially synthetic beings that are replaceable. Like Icarus has died like three times in like seven issues already. Like so, Man. like they're similar to like what the X Men do now, where it's just like death is more of an inconvenience for the Eternals more than like, and which is why they don't really sweat it. Which is why like I think that's a more interesting aspect that they didn't lean into in the movies that they're really leaning into in the comic, it's kind of a spoiler for the comic. I don't know if people are going to read it, but there's also like a twist in their resurrection too. And they find out there's a really dark secret to their resurrection. Like when they get resurrected, there's a price and it's like fucked up. Mm. And like, they're having to, to deal with that now because the Eternals all die before the worst fucking Bendis comic ever. We were just talking about Bendis, Civil War II. And like all the Eternals die because they figured out like their programming was a lie. Like they learned that like basically in the movie, like the Celestials lie to you like, you guys aren't shit for real, for real. You guys thought you were like the God protectors, which are just part of this fucking experiment too. And you guys aren't really important. And they all went crazy and killed themselves in Civil War too. And then this comic, they, they all have come back and it's like them dealing with like them having no purpose. Similar kind of to the end of the movie where it's like, all right, what the fuck could we do now? Because we thought we were here for all this time for this grand purpose. And now we just realize we ain't shit. We're just pawns in the game of some space gods. And just them trying to, trying to deal with that. So it was a really interesting run. Like I said, I like the Thanos stuff. I would highly recommend it. That and, um, like I said, the top X-Men comics left. Like I said, Inferno, that's your main book. Um, Hellions is still great. And uh, Sword, those are your top X-Men books. I'm not really feeling mm. Excalibur. I think that's getting ready to get canceled anyway. Um, Marauders mm. is getting canceled, but that's getting relaunched later, which is all right. It's been pretty mid to me, honestly. And um, Trial of Magneto has been... Uh, okay for me. It's more of a Wanda story, so I feel like it's kind of false advertising. It's like Child of Magneto, but it's really just a Scarlet Witch story. And mm. it's a decent Scarlet Witch story, but it's just like, I don't know where it's going yet. It's it's only halfway through, so I was expecting more Trial of Magneto and less like, what the fuck is going on with Wanda, but you know, it's alright. But mostly, it's all about Inferno for the X-Men right now. See, what happens to their government right now. Right now, uh, 
the whole thing was uh, about not bringing back precognitive mutants who can see the future. And Inferno is all about mm. Mystique getting her wife back. And she has resurrected Destiny. And now shit is hitting the mm. fan. So now we have... Uh, it's just a lot of political maneuvering. And it's way more entertaining than I thought it would be. I thought I would want to see the X-Men fighting Sentinels and not in a fucking boardroom, like, cutting deals with each other and shit and backstabbing. But it's, it's messy, it's juicy, and I fuck with it. Hashtag right. America. Right. Hashtag America. All right, is that all the comics everybody's reading right now? Yes, sir. I got I to gotta be out, though, boys. Uh, all right. Yeah, we're about to wrap up anyway. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us on a new episode of the nerds who rock jays i'm your host lk the guy the deity the mogul also i have been here with c jizzle live from liberty sizzle aka puffco poppy the man with the tattoos on his hands producer b mac also we have the artsy fartsy guy Steve guy <laughs> also, we have Sith Lord, aka Funko Pop Poppy, aka Playlist Poppy. And also, before we leave, can you tell them where to? Uh, well, uh, can you tell them where to uh, get our sponsors from again? Uh, KB, please. Yeah, at phenomenoncocktails.com. That's uh, P H E N O M E N O N cocktails.com. Yo, why are you always wearing a sweater? I love sweaters, bro. <laughs> I respect. I love, I love hoodies, bro. They just. I, res- I respect. It's that. comfy, man. I ain't got no shirt on underneath this. It's just a sweater. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram at f i y a period s q u a d. I'm sorry, I went to Gwen Park. Also, follow us on uh, Twitter at Fire Squad N T W K. Also, all our other social media platforms and the DMV on Facebook. If you are a creator or an artist or a podcaster or a singer or anything, yeah, we support all DMV local talent. Ugh, local talent. Thank you. Tell someone you love them, gang. Good job, boys. Yeah. <laughs>